Well, this is what we call a hot potato topic. Now, there have been so many different viewpoints and narratives that have been offered on this issue. And uh, in fact, this is a conflict that goes back 70 long years, litigation upon litigation. And, uh, you know, the government of Tamil Nadu is intent on taking over the administration of the Chidambaram Nataraja temple. While the Dikshitas, on the other hand, they are a priestly class. They have fought tooth and nail in uh, the court to hold on to their ancient rights to administer the temple and carry out rituals and prayers which have been passed down to them generation after generation. Now, things have, of course, gone completely haywire in the last uh, couple of months. There have been allegations of child marriage. Uh, there have been arrests that have been made. There have been allegations, even more serious allegations, of the two-finger tests having been used on minor girls belonging to the Chidambaram Dikshidhar families. So um, let's listen in to um, you know what... The Dikshidas have to say. Now, of course, I don't have the Dikshidas exactly with me, but I have the lawyer, Mr. Chandrasekhar, who is joining us now. He is uh, uh, fighting in court on behalf of the Chidambaram Dikshidas. And uh, let's hear from him on what actually is happening as far as this uh, controversy is concerned. Uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, just recently, yesterday, in fact, um, there, have, there has been another uh, issue. The HR and CE personnel have come inside the temple and there has been a you know, there's been an argument. What actually happened? Can you tell us? Yesterday, what has happened was the the today is a, a festival is going on. There's an annual festival. There's a big uh, annual. One one is in Ani month of Tamil, and another is in Margari. These are the two major festivals of the Nagaraja temple. So it is today he is now a Radhausu. That uh, the Nataraja, main Nataraja himself will come out in Rath in four streets. So the, yesterday was the previous day. That is the eighth day of the uh, thing. And usually they make preparation to take out that Nataraja from the main uh, Santram and to the Rath. So this is one kind of a festival which has been there for more than uh, many number of years. So the crux of the matter or the, the issue is that there is a main uh, Nataraja is placed in Sitsaba that is called Garbhagraham. And uh, before that, there is an Arthamandavam, which is normally called in other temples. But here it is called Kanagasam. Both of them were in, in a slightly elevated place. But usually, and there are, since there is a very small place, and uh, in Kanagasam, the six Kala Bhujas will be held. Chandra Molishura Bhuja, because the Abhishekams are not done to Nadraja only six times a year. So, therefore, the uh, Abhishekam six times a day will be done only to the Chandra Molishura, just particularly. So, this is done in Kanagasabi. So, whenever there is a religious thing, uh, normally uh, the uh, worshippers, devotees will not be allowed to go because once the religious pujas are doing there. So, in previous years, before COVID, what has happened was, I give a brief introduction so that the matter can be understood in proper perspective. Before COVID, some usually small devotees, small number of devotees used to go between in between time when the Kala Puja is not there. So in order to have a, a darshan from a close circles. So in those days, that is before 2020 or 2019 or also, the daily attendance of the devotees is only 1,000 or even 1,500. So between those six uh, six Kala, uh, Kala Bhujas, at least only 200 to 300 people will be only going. Only they are mostly not uh, uh, the regular uh, local devotees will go only occasionally. But only people from uh, far off place they like to go between in between times between Kala Bhujas. That is only 300 to 100. So these things happen. And Dikshidas don't even collect any uh, special darshan ticket as it is done in HRNC temple. But this is going on. Then after COVID, what has happened was there is a large number of devotees used to come. There is more than 5,000 people daily at a, uh, visit Chitambaram temple. And during Sunday and uh, Saturday, 
the crowd is much more than 20000 and during the auspicious days is more than 30 40000 well, like very important auspicious days so when these people come and there is a normal is a very very narrow space in kanaka sabha cannot accommodate all those people and the dikshas do not want to levy any uh, special darshan ticket that is not taught in practice and vogue in chidambaram temple anybody can come and what is very important in chidambaram temple in spite of large number of devotees coming somebody entering into the any uh, entrance there are four entrances any four entrances within 5 minutes they can have the darshan of main deity this is not possible in a very equally uh, important temples like meenakshi or uh, tirchandu or any other uh, celebrated temples that is not possible at all but because they levy special darshan ticket there will be a long queue waiting but here there is no queue anybody can just walk in just have darshan in within 5 minutes so this is happening so they don't want to discriminate between the people having darshan uh, uh, in the main from uh, behind the kanaka sabha mandapam so everybody thought that the, they will accept and the devotees are not complaining but there are some difference of opinion between among dikshitas and one dikshitas has been objecting it because only a 300 families 400 families and we cannot expect everybody to uh, have a consensus but only a, only one two a uh, descendant and they went out and they protested and they joined the hands with somebody in the opposite uh, group which has been opposing these dikshitas uh, for many number of years the, there is a hostile campaign against dikshitas by a fringe groups the group of elements they have been opposing him and they are mostly non believers so dik dikshitas since his voice is not been uh, is is request is not been heard he went out and joined them so the issue started in february 2022 when this one uh, dikshita went out of their fold and joined the groups which are opposing them so what is the issue was they want darshan from kanaka sabha how to regulate it how to do it they don't have any answers they went and approached the government the government instead of uh, doing anything in consultation with the dikshitas they decided unilaterally and there is also a uh, the opposite gang went and approached the madras high court one person filed a writ petition a public interest litigation for allowing the people to worship from kanaka sabha this is a very small place even in that petition it was really mentioned it is only by 2 by 10 the the narrow space in which the people have to climb and then uh, have darshan so in that dikshitas is also made a party at the time of admission dikshitas are not given any notice the tamil nadu government which is a friendly litigation was fought in the time of before the chief justice and the chief justice was not told by the tamil nadu government represented by the advocate general that this temple is not under the control of tamil nadu government and it is under the control of the dikshitas without even mentioning he said that covid restrictions are there we will uh, make uh, uh, district administration district collector was a party so he will say that in consultation of the district collector some decision will be taken but no notice was served on the dikshitas and the no dikshitas views were not heard at the time of admission probably because the advocate general had appeared and told the only that district collector will be taken into consideration but the order was passed by the chief justice saying that all the respondents 1 to 3 that is first is hrnc department second is district collector kadalu the third one is secretary pudu dikshitas who are administrating the temple all will be consulted and a decision has to be taken taking all aspects but this order is been misused by the tamil nadu government hrnc department by passing a go go number 115 they passed a go without even consulting the people who are in administration of this uh, temple as per the supreme court judgment you already i uh, to say briefly is a 70 years of litigation this has gone by 
the third round of litigation has ended on 6-1-2014 -20 when the division bench of the Supreme Court says that administration of the Chidambaram Temple is only with Dikshitas who are denominational community and they have constitutional protection under Article 26. So this right. was a final no, agreement no, no, no. binding on the Tamil Nadu government. In spite of this, in spite of this, they pass a GU interfering with the Darshan uh, procedures that has been followed in Chinnabar. So this right. is an invention of interference. Then after this, then there is a loose arrangement has been going on where people are allowed only to a limited extent. But daily on daily basis, this one dictator who went out of the fold and there are some groups supporting him are always been causing and disturbing the worship uh, and puja uh, activities of the dictators. It has been going on from the uh, May 2022. All right. Then, I'm going to yeah. come to that in a, in now, a second. Now, yesterday, incident, and, uh, incident. to the yesterday incidents. Yesterday, there was a festival, the main festival, and on from eighth day, what they have put up a notice board saying that because of, to help the devotees coming from far off place to mention that darshan in Kanagasabe will not be allowed on 8th, 9th and 10th day of the festival because main deity itself is going out. Therefore, no darshan will be. So in order to facilitate uh, given information to the devotees coming from outside, a blame board was displayed. This was subjected by the uh, dissenting dictators and his supporters. And they went and complained to the uh, Chidambaram police and also to the uh, HRNC department, who has got no control. But the HRNC department, instead of abiding by the Supreme Court judgment, they think that they have a control. They came near the temple and asked to remove the board, which is improper, according to me, because they do have got no business to enter into a temple, which they don't have any control. Actually, they can make a request, but what is that? They can you can you can make an inquiry if some objections are there. Some some of the devotees they can make an uh, request. They can make an inquiry. What what has happened? Then they should have to understand that there is a festival going on because of the festival that uh, Naraja uh, himself has to come out of that Kanagasabai and the Chitsabai, that's the main uh, place, Garbagraha, to the Rath. So there was some arrangements has to be done. A lot of elaborate puja has to be done before some uh, this kind of uh, uh, Naraja coming out. And there are some valuable jewels has to be uh, also be uh, offered at the time when the Naraja is coming out in Rath. Therefore, they are in a narrow space. How can you have a large number of devotees are coming? How can there be uh, darshan can be allowed? It is taken on an administrative uh, uh, administration by the Pusitikshitas who are administrating that tool in a very uh, logical sense and a reasonable manner also. Why they have to make an issue out of I want to ask you something. Yeah, yes. I want to ask you something. Can you tell us a little bit, I mean, a lot of the of our audience may not know who the Chidamaram Dikshitars are. How yes. many uh, members of this community are left? Can you just uh, explain that? So the, now, presently, there are only 1,500 is a very, very micro-ethnic community. And they marry only among themselves. Even though they are Brahmins, they only marry among themselves. Actually, what according to the Purana and the epics, this, uh, this thing, they are, uh, it is a mythological belief that they are 3,000 in numbers. And Nadraja is one among them. And what the administration is followed is, because Nadraja temple is known as Nadraja temple. But it is called as Sabanayaka temple. Why the name Sabanayaka came into existence? Because Nadraja is the real administrator of the temple. Because all the meetings, general body meeting by the Pudu Dikshidas, they are called Pudu Dikshidas. Dikshidas are individual name is Dikshida. And they have an assembly, they call Pudu Dikshidas. So in a general assembly, they take the lamp from the main Garbhagraha representing Nataraja, and he is placed as a presiding officer. Therefore, the name Sabanayagar comes. So he is the one who is administrating any decision taken by the general body. He is only taken in the presence of Nataraja. So this is the way in which this temple administration is being carried out from long number of years. 
and it is a religious belief that Nataraja is administrating through the body of Buddha Dikshitas. So they take a decision in presence of the Nataraja and therefore this temple is called Sabha Temple because he presides over the general body assembly of Dikshitas and it is considered as a mythological belief that Nataraja is one among them. So this is the basis in which the religious belief is being built and the administration is being carried out. That's why Article 26 is being giving protection to this denominational uh, administration. So this has to be a constitutional matters are now given a final quietus by the top uh, court of the country. They understand Article 26, which gives protection. And the HRNC Act, there is a section called 107. 107 clearly says whenever there is an administration by the denomination, the other sections of the HRNC will not apply because there is a protection under Article 26. So they also know there is a section, there is a specific section in 107. Nothing in the Act, the contained in the Act, will apply to the uh, administration which has been done under the protection from the Article 26. So what the Supreme Court judgments clearly says is that these people or denominational uh, 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 administration and the temple administration is carried out by a denominational sect. Therefore, they are protected by Article 26 and the exception class, that is the, the Article uh, the Section 107 of HRSD directly applied to them. And the HRSD department has got no, uh, uh, no jurisdiction or no role to play in the administration of the temple. This is given a final quietus. But still, why these people are doing it? You may ask this. This, this is a question is very, very simple. Because they want to take the administration of the temple by hook or crook. So they create all these confusion in spite of knowing they got no jurisdiction. So this uh, yesterday incident, the executive officer of another temple came near the, uh, came to the uh, Nadraja temple and asked the dikshitas to remove the boat, which he can't. When there is a tradition, when there is a festival going on, when the administration of the Chitambaram dikshitas decide that this is the way the, the darshan has to be arranged. Why they are questioning? And the, no, the main important point that has to be uh, uh, noted down in this matter is there is only one dissenting teacher and there is only one devotee and there are some group of elements supporting them only at it. There are thousands of devotees coming each day and they never complain. There is not even a single uh, the, the, uh, devotee with uh, coming there complain about the whole festival or whole thing from the pattern of events from May 2022 from uh, uh, February 22 only one Dikshita who is a dissenting Dikshita who has been suspended and other two three people supporting him are all making complaints to the HRNC department and police department obviously because they are in uh, difference of opinion and they got a uh, enmity against the general administration therefore they are making it's not there are thousands of devotees coming each day thousands of devotees have visited the temple for the past one and a half years and they have not made any even single complaint so, there is only an argumentative campaign against them by a group of people who are non-believers mostly and they are making complaint against an administration Right. Now, Mr. Chandrasekhar, let's move on to uh, the other controversies in this case. Now, let's talk about the governor, R.N. Ravi, had uh, made a statement about uh, the two-finger test being used on uh, minor girls of the Dikshitar community. Can you tell us more about that? What did it really yeah. happen? Actually, what, what has happened was, in September 2022, this, there was a, the police came uh, and visited one of the Dikshitar's uh, house, alleging that the child marriage has taken place and they want to investigate. In fact, that is not the local police. The, pol the complaint was given in Kadalu and Delta team came and in plain uniform and they came in a private car and just they dragged the Dikshitas, who is alleged to have been the father of a minor girl who is alleged to have been married. So, uh, without showing anything, they just barge into the house. They just drag the Dikshita saying that there's a child marriage has taken place and you, you are, you, they have taken custody. 
None of the procedures followed for arrest has been there. Basu has given a DB Basu's judgment of Supreme Court, which gives clear guidelines for arrest. None of them has been followed. Because the Kadalur, the, the complaint was uh, received at Kadalur police station. The jurisdiction magistrate was informed, in Chidambaram was not informed about the arrest or taking custody of the Dikshil. So he was just put, dragged and put, and the video clipping is available, very much available. Now, after the arrest of the father, the minor child was forcibly taken custody and she was taken to the police station at Kadaru and she was detained there at till 11 p.m., much against to the, uh, the, uh, the police rules and regulations regarding the keeping anybody for inquiry in police station after 6 p.m. That too, not the child. The la any lady cannot be detained after 6 p.m. And the, especially the minor child. And the minor child was not even accompanied by her mother. She was forcibly taken. And what the FIR says, she was forced to confess that the marriage has taken place. On the basis of the forced confession, an affair was arrested. And his father was arrested. And he was remanded to judicial custody. Then they forced two days later, two, three days later, they forced bail will not be given to the father. And she has to undergo the clinical medical test. And the, and the minor child and the, the affected parents report that a bad test was conducted on them. So this was the first case. Then week later, a second case was again there. The second case also, they went to Chennai to inquire about that alleged family who is alleged to have conducted the marriage. That father was undergoing eye, eye surgery. His wife and the minor child was forcibly taken from Chennai to Kadalu and they are detained there till 11 p.m. at Kadalu DSP camp office. An alleged inquiry was conducted in which the police uh, police forced uh, the minor child to confess, but she didn't. But uh, the, in order to make one arrest, they arrested the brother of the alleged groom there for abetting the marriage. And they falsely say in all those cases, the investigation, in, in, in the guise of investigation, they say, you have to give photos of the alleged thing. And they seize the mobile photo, mobile uh, of the uh, person who are attending the inquiry and forcibly upload and download some materials they are having, which is against law. There is a procedures for uh, making investigation into uh, taking uh, materials from the electronic way. There are procedures. That procedures have not been followed at all. And after the arrest of that brother, uh, the brother of the alleged group, they also arrested the uh, the uh, father and also the, the, uh, the alleged groom and the father uh, two days later. That was the second case. Then this uh, girl has been uh, forced to confess as, uh, that she has married. She didn't. Then the third case, week after week, this third case uh, was registered. And the third case also the father and the alleged father of the groom was also arrested. And the girl, in the third case, she was also forced to give a uh, statement, uh, undergo the medical test. Because they say that uh, his father, uh, who was out on bail, his bail will be cancelled. So these are all the things which has happened. First of all, I want to say, the all cases are registered under Child Marriage Prohibition Act 2006. The maximum punishment is only two years. As per the Arnish Kumar judgment, and later on followed by uh, the judgment of the Supreme Court by the judge, uh, by, by judges S. K. Kaul and uh, uh, M. M. Sundaresh in Satinda Kumar Antil was a CBI. This is a landmark judgment following the Arnish Kumar judgment, which says hey, for the offences under punishable under seven years, arrest is not mandatory. So they have to follow and they have to issue summon under 41A CRPC to the uh, uh, persons who have been yes. accused.
So you are basically the... saying that the police did not follow uh, the proper procedures while uh, uh, arresting or remanding them. Point no, proper point procedures. I, not only want proper to, I want to ask you one more question. I think this is something that's very important uh, to our viewers as well because there's a lot of confusion, right? Now, it's yes. it's absolutely unacceptable that the two-finger test has been uh, um, done on these young minor girls. There is absolutely no provision in law for that and it's absolutely illegal. Now, it's back bad. apart, bad what about the point about child marriage? Did any child marriage actually take place or not? I am saying that three cases have probably been registered. As an advocate, any the state has got every right to go into an uh, allegation of child marriage. They got every right to investigate and find out and register the case also. So uh, for that, I'm not going into that because these matters are under investigation, <laughs> even as of now. So I am not going to say whether it has taken place or not taken place because there are persons who have been added as accused in those cases. So those accused persons have got a right of defense to uh, uh, in the court to defend themselves. So I leave it that way. But I am a person who is defending the body of Pudududikshudas, the administration. So I am a person who is uh, defending their interest of the administration. As far as from the administrative point of view, what I want to highlight, and I just wanted to make this very clear in public domain, I have been doing it from October 2022. I will do it again for your audience also. What is that is the Dikshitas are administrating the temple as per the temple satam. It is called temple satam, temple law. This, been, this has been codified in 19th century itself. So in that, it is very clearly, it has been mentioned that married male Dikshitas will be attaining the age of 21, will be able to perform Chandramoli Shura Puja. Because that is a puja, it has been daily done. So that is a right of dikshitas to do puja. So married person age 21 years. Therefore, the law which has been codified law of the temple by the administration only mandates a married person of 21 years to do Chandramoli Shura Puja. Now, the group which has been orchestrating a uh, false and hostile campaign against each other. What they say, in order to uh, give a puja right, they are encouraging the child marriage. This is absolutely false because the codified law itself, we say, is a 21 years. So there is a need of the administration to encourage or uh, ask them to perform uh, child marriage at the age of 16 or 17 to get puja right. So that is absolutely false. So this is a water which which this is this is a thing which I want to make very clear at the outset. So now, given this background, if some individual dictators have, even for argument's sake, if a child marriage has taken place, it is a void. It, it is not allowed. And I am a social responsible person, not only defending the dictators, but I am also a social responsible person. Who say that uh, this Child Prohibition Act is a social welfare act aimed to eradicate the child marriage. And not only in Tamil Nadu, not only in Kadalu district where the temple is situated, there are child marriage going on in all communities, especially in... Yes, I mean, we saw an explosion of uh, child marriage during the lockdown, especially. We, yeah. I think because it was very so many other factors, so many factors. factors. And the, I think the UNICEF, uh, UN yes. body, having child says 27% of the marriages is taking place in India is child marriage. Yeah. So when there is a, such kind of thing, no, what this, this social, how the, how the, how the, how the, this social welfare legislation has to be included. It is penal in nature, but that is one thing. But the penal is not the only deterring effect how the law should be implemented. This is a basic law. The welfare Can you state that? no. Yes. Can you explain yes. what you mean by that? It's a penal yes. act. So, like there is a punishment yes. for a jail, pun yes. jail punishment. Yes, punishment is a last resort because there is a jurisprudence. Why? What what the jurisprudence says is in the, uh, the core offenses, 
The core references is criminal law is in a sentence. That is 302. There is 376. That is, that is again, this, uh, this book. So, are all acts where the heinous offense has been committed against child, against women, against the uh, these death, somebody murdering. Right. These are all, and also the other uh, the terrorist activities. Other things. Those need penal punishment. Then the law has to be implemented very forcibly, arrest, and then uh, prosecution, and uh, then the trial, and then conviction. So those are all different. Here, this is also a special act. It is a social welfare in nature. Therefore, the jurisprudence calls, there is one thing called, this, this thing has to be handled very carefully. So go to them and give counseling. Because these are all the matters which is done. Ignorant of law is not ex is excuse is not is not is not excusable. I do understand, but you have to understand the culture and the traditions of this country. Therefore, I say, since it is a social welfare, penal punishment is a last resort. Don't go for that. So you're saying you that are the child the marriage state 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 state. Yes. It, is, it is important for the state government to you know counsel the parents. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Because why I'm saying is, because in, even in Kadalu district, in Titakudi, there are some child marriage uh, has been taken place. So the social welfare department went there and offered counseling to them and asked them uh, not to do that. And there was no arrest, no clinical examination. Then why in these six others, why they do arrest when it is not mandated by the Supreme Court? And why do, do the clinical test, which is again not required for this Efforts, uh, the the act, the act child uh, never asked for it because the age proof has to be proved by the fact of the school leaving certificate, the school certificate, the date of birth in schools. So that is eligible to register a case. So if it is contested and if the defense says that the ma ma major this child has uh, attained majority, that is a different thing. That is a trial has to uh, see whether the child is a minor girl or not. That is a trial court. That is a magistrate court. Then there is a permission of the magistrate. Some test can be done because maybe the radiology or even some other test can be done. How to say that they are 18 years old or not or under 18. So these are the tests even done in other POXO cases also. But what this police, the investigation by the Tamil Nadu police with an ulterior motive to force the Dikshitas to come to terms. They wanted to convert this Cases registered under Tamil Nadu, uh, the, the, this uh, child marriage Pro uh, prevention uh, prevention act into POXO act. That's why they are make arrest and they take uh, illegal custody of the ch minor child and they also force uh, medical examination and clinical examination of the banned test on the minor girls, uh, which is which is. Uh, which can explain why they, the real motive can be easily been understood because when they approach the similar cases in other districts, even in Kajiburam district, it has been reported some cases were there. They went and no cases was registered, but the counseling was done. Even okay. when. So you're saying that uh, basically, um, you're saying assuming child marriage has taken place, counseling should have been given and not arrest, and uh, POXO should not have been invoked. And you're also saying that. Uh, you know, the box oh, was not invoked. Yeah. They tried to invoke box. They, they, they don't invoke box, but they try to invoke box right. because it's a severe charge. The bail will not be granted to the dictators. Yes, right. okay. So they will battle it. the dictators by detaining them in more number of days in the custody. Okay. Now you're also saying that out of, I think there are three minor girls, if I'm not mistaken. Out of three minor girls, two have undergone, forcibly undergone the two finger test. Yes, clinical okay. examination. Right. So now, um, so then what has happened was on October 25, 25, 10, 2022, two dictators representing the uh, dictionary community petitioned that uh, all these narratives which has been given you, given you to the National Child Rights Commission, Delhi, and also Tamil Nadu Child Rights Commission in Chennai, and also to the DGP and also to the Home Secretary. The, there are two prayers. The first prayer was that the dictators uh, do not want the investigation to be done by the Tamil Nadu police because there is a conflict of interest 
and they got an ulterior motive. Therefore, they wanted to transfer it to the central agency, that investigation. The second thing is, the banned literal finger test was conducted. There is a violation, there is a serious charge about the child rights violation. Therefore, the National Child Rights Commission has to inquire into this matter. So, that was in October. Then, coming to a main question of uh, Ex Excellency Honorable Governor making a statement in Times Now magazine interview on 4 5 2023. He gave an interview. In that interview, he highlighted this child rights violation yes, of a minor. We, we are aware of this. Yes. Um, so the, after, that, after that, the National Child Rights Commission has taken this yes. matter. Even though our petition has been pending from October 2022, National Child Rights, because the uh, thing has taken into public domain by the constitutional head of the state, it has gained importance. And the uh, National Child Rights Commission sent a member on 24-5-2023 to inquire into the incident. But the dictionaries are feeling insecure because they already have undergone a traumatic experience by this arrest and this twist. So they approached me and then tell me, told me that you should be also present. So I told them that you go and give a statement before them, nothing wrong. Whatever which has happened, you have to go and tell the truth before the, uh, the member of the NCPCR who has come all the way from Delhi. You give them a statement. Then the NCPCR member uh, had a uh, closed uh, inquiry with the minor child. One minor child appeared in the video uh, because she was staying outside. She was not in station. The other other child appeared in person. Both of them said there is a, a, a band test has been done to them. And they, the member has recorded it. And he said he will submit the report to the uh, NCPCR channel. So this is done. After that, that is very important. Why I am saying this, all these ulterior motive and other things. This, there is a selective leakage of morphed image of the child marriage in the public domain. Obviously, we can think uh, who, who, who would have leaked because the investigation is going on. And the, uh, the alleged photograph, the alleged photograph is only with the investigation. Without the knowledge of the investigation team, how can these morphed photos? One thing is this minor identity has to be protected. That is there. There is a law of the land. The, the dignity and the privacy of the child has to be protect, protected. Giving scant respect to the morality and the law. This uh, photographs of morphed minor children of child marriage has been leaked. The video has been leaked in some selective uh, uh, channels. Then I gave a statement. I said this is against law. Any event, the privacy of the minor child has to be protected. And uh, it, there cannot be any leakage of any marked image. Obviously, after the NCPCR member has conducted an inquiry, the, this, this can be only been seen as a damage control exercise by the government who has leaked out. So that was that. I'm going to ask you one last question. Yes. I'm going to ask you one last question. Do you think that the courts will give the Dikshidas justice? What are the Dikshidas themselves saying? Do they believe yes, that? I'm, I'm saying that justice? because I also, I also made in my earlier interviews also to the public mind. I say this is a micro ethnic community. I was already uh, highlighted. This 1,500 community. So, of course, they have already undergone a traumatic experience by way of illegal arrest and the clinical test. Now, a mighty government with all powerful, uh, all the power in their hand, he is trying to use even the media by giving, leaking out the marked photo and also uh, disturbing with the, their own administration, even though it is constitutionally protected by the Supreme Court judgment, they are interfering with the HRC department. When there is, there is no level playing field at all for the Dikshidas. As per law, as a legal advisor, I have advised them to approach the competent authority. The competent authority in this case is NCPCR. Then I also gave an interview after all these things happened after May 24. So I gave an interview that I court or the Supreme Court should take a sumoto inquiry of a child right violation because a child right violation is a serious violation. It is not as if 
that the dictators are afraid to face or approach approach the high court why should the court take so much to say you can always file right that, that, that is what i am saying not a level playing field at all okay they are so always being level level they have been interfering their their administration yes. is being, their every livelihood is been uh, been threatened at each day yes. on each day they have been threatened make that point quite clearly that uh, you know we, i mean you're battling a, a big power like uh, a state government yes and uh, yeah we so it's it's yeah it's fair enough you're saying the playing field is not so i'm only highlighting about the plight and the uh, the real yeah. situation there it's ground situation yes all right so uh, i'm going to i'm i'm really running out of time now so i want to thank you yeah. um really thank you a lot for you know coming and joining us and explaining so clearly the chain of things that have happened so far and uh, you know it's um, it's it's very it's been very confusing for a lot of us um uh, out here who have little access to what is going on and you know only one side of the story is actually you know being yeah. told loud and clear so yes. thank you for clearing the air on that and yes. uh, we wish you the very best of luck in your pursuit for justice for the dictators yes. and yes. at the same time if uh, there has been child marriage that has to be punished in whatever i assure you madam i assure you madam yes. that 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 uh, the dictators community themselves have now given a press statement when they petition to the ncpcr they will abide by law and they are ready to abide by law so that is very clear so one thing one more thing which i want to thank your channel is that on behalf of the both the dictators and on behalf of myself i profusely thank for you to give an opportunity for us to uh, place our views on the public domain through your channel and thank you very much for the patient and uh, uh, audience that you have been giving to me thank you very much thank you very much sir it's been a pleasure many thanks yeah. and good luck in your fight for this is mine too thank you very much